Today I'm going to show you how to recover a Wisecam version 3 using the USB cloner software on Windows. Let's get started. Hey guys, it's Josh from the WL Tech Blog, and today I've got this Wisecam version 3 and we're going to pretend that it is currently bricked. I'm going to show you how to unbrick this device. So first thing you need to do is follow this video that shows you how to get cloner installed and set up on a Windows system, assuming you're using Windows. If you're not using Windows, then you probably don't need the tutorial. Now I've got my ThinkPad here running Windows. I have the tools that are necessary for this job, which are a long, thin Phillips screwdriver and a good micro USB cord with data lines, a thin flathead screwdriver that you can use as a prying tool, and I'm going to be using a regular razor blade. So let's get this guy opened up. Now this camera is not actually bricked. It is brand new and it has the Geno on it already, but that doesn't matter. I have not pulled the film off of this. That's how new this thing is. Now what we're going to do, if you look at this bezel here, this part is actually its own piece, this little white outline. And we're going to take our razor blade and we're gonna start right in this seam. There is a gap there where we'll be able to get the razor blade in and we'll be able to use that to move around the edge and get this bezel completely removed. So let's get started with that. You might have to wiggle a little bit to get the first bite with the blade but once you get it in you can just kind of go around the edge here until you're able to start pulling it up and there you have it the bezel has been removed now there are three little white rubber plugs in here we have to take them out, and to do that, I'm going to use my very pointy tweezers. Let me show you what I've got here. Maybe better to show you here. And where these rubber plugs go in, there's a little indentation there, and you can actually get the point of the tweezers Right in the edge, give it a little poke, and then we can pull the plug right out, like so. We're going to do that on all three. Go to the edge, dig in a little bit. If you push these in accidentally, it's a little tough to get them back out, so try to be careful on this step. I'll show you how I fix that later on in the video. There we go, we got all three. Now we're going to take our long, thin Phillips screwdriver and we're just going to remove the three screws in these holes. That one's loose. That one's loose. That one's this. We're just going to tap this on the bench so that the screws will drop out. One, two, three. Now the next step we have, the actual main body of the camera is kind of wedged in and there's going to be a lip with a seal around it. So we're going to use our small thin flathead screwdriver. Let me just fix the audio sync real quick, which has a screw stuck to it. And we're just going to go in down here at the bottom where we know there's a bit of a gap. So let's go in, give it a little pry. You may have heard a little pop there. That was it kind of coming loose. And just gently kind of maneuver it around until the whole plastic part 
is now sticking up. And we should be able to pull this out like so. There we go. All right, now there's one wire connector, I guess two wire connectors, they're bundled together going here and here. We're just gonna leave those alone. They're not gonna be in our way. As we look at the board here, right here is the flash chip. So that's our 16 megabyte flash. And to trigger cloner, we need to do a short on this while powering the device up. Essentially what we do is we create a short using something like this screwdriver, which we can use to bridge these two legs. It's pin five and six, and I'll show you. You count these, you have a little dot on the chip, which is here, and it goes counterclockwise. So it's pin one, two, three, and four, and then back up the other side, five, six, seven, and eight. What we need to do is short pin five to pin six while powering the camera on. Mm -hmm. And that will cause the chip not to be readable immediately on boot. That'll put the device into recovery mode or programming mode, at which point the cloner software will take over. So I'm gonna jump over to Windows here real quick. And we're going to download the firmware and we're going to configure for this device. Oh, one other thing you need to do is actually look at the processor here and identify if you don't already know which model you have there are a couple options there's a t31 and the code may have a different letter depending on which chip you have it might be an x it might be a zx it might be an a or an al now you probably need to squint real hard but you see t31 with the x at the end that's the processor then the Wi-Fi you can make out, it says Realtek, that's the 8189 FTV. The other one is an Alto Beam. All right, and in my case, I have a T31X and I have the Realtek Wi-Fi. So, all right, let's jump over to Windows. All right, here we are in Windows and we've already got the cloner software installed because we did it in the other video that I told you to follow. So we're just going to open Cloner up, go into Cloner Windows Alpha, and we're gonna run Cloner. Now, while that's starting up, we're gonna go download the firmware that we need for this device. So thingino.com. And we're just gonna scroll down to the Wise Cam 3 and my model is the T31X with the RTL8189. So I'll just grab that. So we go back to Cloner. We're gonna go to Config. We have a T-Series, we have a T31X, and the board we're going to do SFC nor writer full config. Let's go over to policy. Full image file SFC nor offset is zero. And the attribute we're gonna select here, we need to pick our freshly downloaded firmware file, which is this guy right here. Once you have that, we'll hit save, save current config, and we're gonna hit start. All right, so for a first time user of Cloner, go ahead and get your device manager open and we have cloner here i've hit start and we're going to go ahead and start this process so we have a good usb micro usb cable you need to make sure you have one that has data lines in it the one that comes with the camera does not all right so what we're going to do is we're going to use this little screwdriver we're just going to put it in between pins five and six i'm going to rotate it slightly so that it's touching both legs but i'm not putting any pressure on it at all So there we are. Now I'm going to plug the device in and after about two seconds, I'm gonna remove the screwdriver. 
one, two. Now we'll watch the device manager in Windows and we should get a new unknown device. Which we have here. We're going to right click it. We're going to go to update driver. For our options here, we want to browse the computer for drivers. You're going to hit browse. Now you're going to navigate to where you installed cloner on my system that's in the desktop in a folder called cloner and then the cloner win32 driver is what we want go ahead and click ok on that hit next it's going to install the driver and then right away cloner takes over and starts doing its work So we'll just give this a second to do its job. And it's done erasing, it's writing. There we are, 100%. Let's go ahead and unplug. And we are done with Windows. Bye Windows, it's been fun. All right, here we are back again, and we're going to reassemble the Wisecam version 3. So first thing you want to do is check the orientation of the camera. If you find the SD card slot right there, you want to make sure it is pointed at the bottom of the camera. Also, this red band, you want to make sure it's in its groove here. And we're just going to slide it right down into its slot. Now, don't put too much pressure on it, just gently guide it down. Once you get to where you get a little resistance, we're just going to kind of give it little wiggles of pressure around the corners. Eventually, it'll just kind of snug up and you'll get a nice click when it's seated all the way in. Now, go ahead and give it a little pressure on the edges there just to make sure and make sure you don't have any of that seal sticking up, which I do. So we're just going to pop this guy back up. And we're going to reseat it again. There we go. So the next step is the three screws. I'm just going to drop them into the holes and then we'll tighten them up. <laughs> there are very little screws, so they're a bit fidgety when you've got meat fingers. Alright, take our Phillips screwdriver and just run them down. got our three little white plugs now these guys you don't want to push in too far because you can get them to where you'll not be able to pull them out with the tweezers I'm going to show you a trick in a second how to get one out if you accidentally pushed it in too far but first we're just going to set it on the slot there and we're going to use a screwdriver to just snug it back into place here it should be sticking up about as far as the bezel around it. It is in a little recess slot there. So between those two surfaces. So there's one. Take number two. Good. Oh, and that one's crooked. Alright, so what do you do if you screw up like that? You can take a 1 16th drill bit and we're just going to give it a little bit of pressure and run it down along the edge 
of this hole and pull it up and up comes the plug. You're not trying to actually drill a hole into the plug or into the plastic. You're just moving it. Alright, there's our plugs. The last piece is the bezel. Now you probably will need to adjust the sticky tape that's on it a little bit. I've already done mine just so it's not sticking up around the edges. And there's no particular way this goes other than it should fit the inner part of the camera perfectly. Right, and then we just do a little pressure around with our thumb. All right, and that's it. We have revived this camera back from the dead. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. This camera is now good to go, ready to boot up and set up Thingino for the first time. Now, if you found this video helpful or enjoyed it, definitely give me a thumbs up if you don't mind. Think about subscribing to the channel if you like this sort of content. And if you'd like to participate, check us out over on the Hackers Homestead Discord channel. The link for that is down in the video description. If you're thinking about getting more cameras to use with Thingino, check out the Wook I've got linked in the description as well. It is probably the best camera that we have for Thingino right now, and it's definitely much better value for money than one of these Wise cams. So that's it for today. We'll see you in the next video. Until then, stay fresh, cheese bags.